Hi, this is Todd Alvey with Silverfire. And today, let's talk about rocket stoves and a little bit about stove design uh, and the great improvements we have with the Silverfire rocket stove, the most state-of-the-art rocket stove in the world. Uh, it's the only rocket stove that has secondary um, combustion ventilation built into the stove. It's very lightweight. It's all stainless steel with a cast iron top. Uh, refractory stainless steel uh, for increased durability. Um, you're going to find that this stove is very, very efficient um, and produces very uh, just fine ash as the final combustion product because combustion is so uh, clean. Um, when you look at a lot of the stoves on the market, there's all kinds of little CNC uh, backpack stoves that you'll see out there, folding stoves uh, like this one that uh, I had the rights to. Um, all these little CNC slot stoves that you see on the market, there's numerous, numerous makers and brands out there. They're all dirty cook stoves. They're all extremely high in emissions. Uh, they're inefficient. They typically uh, are not going to uh, boil a very large volume of water or, or do many of the things that you're going to want to do. Uh, as with the rocket stove, you know, the whole point of this is to burn cleanly and to burn efficiently, use very little fuel, to be able to cook a meal for your family in emergency, uh, pasteurize water for have provide your family safe drinking water or sanitized cookware, uh, or just have fun, recreation, just keep the heat out of the house in the summertime is a wonderful option with any of the Silver Fire products. Well, let's take a look at a couple of the other stoves that are on the market. The, uh, another stove, here's another uh, stove example on the market. And again, this is just a large collapsible fire pit. Very high in emissions, extremely high in fuel use. And we're doing the exact opposite with a rocket stove. We're using very little fuel and burning very clean. So let's talk a little bit about where we came from and where we're at today and, and how we made these uh, improvements. Uh, some of the important work with um, rocket stoves with Tom Reed's work in Africa, then Dr. Larry Winarski came up with the concept of the insulated combustion chamber above the fire. Uh, to, that means that you're gonna use very little fuel, you're gonna have a much hotter fire, and we're gonna actually make the emissions reburn as fuel. Well then beyond just a primary elbow in a rocket stove, all it is is an elbow with primary ventilation below the grate. The next step up to clean up emissions of course is to add secondary air, secondary combustion above the flame. That's how we really clean up a stove and that's what we've done with the Silver Fire Survivor rocket stove and we'll go over that in a minute. So when I ran uh, Stove Tech and uh, when I um, first started off in rocket stoves, the Stove Tech was a great place to start with is what we knew in 2007. Uh, unfortunately, this, you can see the mild steel body uh, fails in the field. This stove's only been uh, burned three times and we can already see the paint burning off the stove. Uh, the mild steel's failing. Underneath the stove, uh, this stove uh, was approximately 400 degrees and uh, pyrolysis is uh, 500 degrees so we can have a fire uh, on top of a flammable surface which is a, a, another real issue. So these are many of the things that I went after uh, with Stovetech um, redesigned the Survivor. The Stovetech uses a cheap clay ceramic uh, combustion chamber that's very fragile and is prone uh, to falling apart uh, with time. We had projects in, in Haiti where these were supposed to last a couple years and they lasted a couple weeks. Um, if you're in an area where they culturally they like to use sharp sticks to aerate poor fuel like charcoal it, it's very damaging to the stove. Also if you pour uh, accelerants um, any uh, flammable petrol, diesel, any accelerants can shorten the life of the stove too. The other issue was uh, what we knew in 2007 that we greatly approved on with Silver Fire was the cast iron top. You can see 
that this stove tech um, cast iron top in the echo zoom and the early envirofit tops were very very thin and very fragile in fact we had containers where a large portion of the entire container all had cracked cast iron tops and you notice that the castings are hollow the pot supports so these are some of the many things uh, that I thought about uh, when I decided to uh, create a better stove with the silver fire rocket stove so one of the uh, first uh, things that I wanted to address was the cast iron top you can see that the uh, silver fire cast iron tops approximately three times thicker uh, than the, the stove tech um, and the echo zoom the early envirofit stoves also you notice that the pot supports are um, solid castings not hollow casting and uh, another thing that you look at and this is what a lot of the DIY rocket uh, makers out there don't get they're making flat top stoves and then using nuts or uh, other items for pot supports on top this concave shape is very important to transfer heat into uh, the cooking vessel uh, even you'll notice with an electric range that convex shape uh, when you replace the the chrome ring under your burner that's designed very specifically to focus heat transfer into the pot so this pot is uh, cast iron top uh, on the stove is really specifically designed in fact if I even change this pot support one millimeter is going to impact either smoke emissions or fuel use so the, the a lot of science goes uh, into uh, the silver fire survivor rocket stove so let me um, show you a couple things on, on the Survivor. This is the first generation Survivor. This was our beta product we launched in um, spring of 2012. And let's take a look at this. One of the things that we did um, was add a door. By adding a door, we have a hotter fire. We're retaining more heat into the combustion chamber. Also, you notice that the combustion chamber is rectangle. Having a rectangle uh, combustion chamber is very important. Unlike an extruded cheap clay combustion chamber, lateral fuel hangs up on the rounded wall. A rectangle combustion chamber allows uniform insertion of fuel into the stove. Now, the Silver Fire uh, Survivor uh, you monitor the fire right through the port here. So the door is always uh, falling down on the fuel. It's always falling down, retaining more heat in the combustion chamber. That's a key part of the design. And here you have uh, the wings that you can see. Uh, another thing is the uh, real advantage with this stove is the superior ventilation over any other rocket stove. You notice that we have 360 degrees of ventilation coming under the stove. This is a radical uh, design change from any other rocket stove in the world. This way we have a much cooler stove underneath, but yet we still have the 1100 degree cooking temperatures on the cast iron top. So let's take a look at the internal workings of the survivor. And we can see right here that there's real ductwork at the bottom of the grate for the primary ventilation below. And we have the lightweight uh, insulation removed uh, from the stove for this shot. Our original uh, stove had perlite in it, and perlite is a perfectly fine uh, lightweight insulation. It was very inexpensive, but there were small particles and big particles. There was a lot of dust on the stove. And um, I did, in the future models, upgrade to all uh, rock mineral fiber uh, that is superior. Now, the other thing that I want you to see that's very important in this stove is looking at the chamber, you can see the little hash marks on the outer perimeter of the combustion chamber and the rear. There's a one centimeter gap. And that one centimeter gap is really really important because the preheated air is traveling up the stove and now if we look inside the combustion chamber at the base of the chimney we have 
secondary uh, ventilation and combustion going on above the flame. And that's how we clean up emissions, use even less fuel, and what makes the Silver Fire rocket stove the cleanest burning uh, stove, rocket stove in the world using the least amount of fuel. And as I said earlier, what you'll have is your end product is very fine ash, unlike other rocket stove designs that are going to leave crude pieces of char because combustion is so much more efficient in this stove. So that was the generation uh, that we launched last spring. Now let's look at the upgrades for um, the next version that came out. <clears throat> well, one thing I noticed uh, with reviews online, lots of people didn't understand the sophisticated new design with the Silver Fire uh, Survivor. And they all wanted to cook with the door open. And the whole point is we want the door down on the fuel to retain a hotter fire, a cleaner burn. Also, lots of folks were taking um, every millimeter of the combustion chamber and filling it up. Remember that the whole point of a rocket stove was the 50% of the world that cooks on biomass daily and has to boil every sip of water they drink to stay alive. So we designed a stove that was designed to cook a meal uh, with four or five sticks. Four or five sticks like this represents over an hour cook time uh, on a rocket stove um, as you meter it into the back of the combustion chamber. So version two, we added top of the line uh, pellet stove insulation your rock mineral wool. There's nothing to break unlike a cheap clay ceramic combustion chamber. So this is a real big improvement. It also cut the weight in half. We went from about 27 pounds with the Stovetech Deluxe uh, stove down to 12 and a half pounds with the stove. So this stove is much more uh, portable and, and easy to, to carry. Um, looking at the over usage of fuel, Another idea I designed uh, in this stove was the fuel gauge. This actual flame-shaped diameter is to try to educate folks that that diameter of fuel or smaller is ideal. Now, you may want to add thicker pieces of fuel, but try adding just one thicker piece with your th uh, thin material. Otherwise, you're just wasting emissions. This stove is very, very efficient with a very little bit of fuel. The um, other thing that I wanted to address over my first beta launch was the temperature under the stove. The uh, stove tech, um, when I, at stove tech, we were about 400 degrees under the thinner stove and about 270 with a deluxe model with a double tile. So the stove, the Silver Fire Survivor uses 360 airflow that really decreased the temperature, but we were still about 270 degrees under the stove. And I really wanted to have a stove that you could put on your wood picnic table and, and never have a concern. So the next item I redesigned on the stove, we can look in these ports right here and we'll see the floating heat baffle plate uh, directly under the combustion uh, chamber floor. That heat baffle reduces the heat, just like a baffle on your motorcycle uh, exhaust pipe or on your vehicle exhaust pipe. This is uh, decreasing the temperature. So the Silver Fire Survivor uh, is the coolest stove in the world and you can confidently cook right on your home picnic table, wood picnic table, and not be concerned um, with burning uh, your, your table. Now you do always monitor a rocket stove because the fire, if you walk away, could travel back out the sticks though and potentially burn your uh, stove. So these are the many upgrades we've uh, used. Also, I want to point out that at Stove Tech, um, with a project that we had go, uh, go wrong with EchoZoom and Stove Tech Stove, uh, down in Haiti, we went to a steel. This is just a refractory steel, and it's also pop can thin. And we built that into the liner to try to uh, protect the clay. But after you've burned it several times, uh, customers were still 
poking through the thin wall and this stove was still falling apart. That was another key feature. You can see that the combustion chamber in the silver fire, um, the liner here is about three times thicker and it is refractory stainless steel, not just a steel alloy. So we really made a very robust, uh, durable stove with the Silver Fire um, Survivor uh, designed for durability, efficiency, uh, and clean cooking. Thank you.